One last time. Hopefully. And by that, I mean that I hope this is the last time I ever place the 60 cent penalty for Brock Lesnar being too lazy to defend his championship on pay-per-view. One destination. The way WWE edited that video right there was awesome in my opinion. One of the first times I've seen a kick-ass opening intro with amazing editing skills. So here's a few cents taken off immediately. I thought The Miz renounced Cleveland and referred to himself as a Hollywood A-lister. Stick to your character, man. It's gonna be the downfall of the team tonight. Well, thanks for spoiling what happens tonight, Corey. Asshole. Uh, we are indeed on the road to WrestleMania. In case you thought for whatever reason that the sign obviously saying WrestleMania was merely a coincidence. Listen, the Usos have taken this tag team personally. Well, the Usos are not in the wrong for this case, considering they've been teaming for years and dominated the tag team division, whereas The Miz and Shane McMahon have only been a team for the better part of two and a half months. Dream of Miz is to become tag team champions. Understandable that Shane had a dream to become a tag team champion, but it's no longer a dream for The Miz, as he had previously won six tag team titles prior to this title reign with Shane. So this line makes no sense. Jimmy Uso was already starting to fall back before The Miz and Shane McMahon could connect with their punches. Like Ricky Bobby, leaving tickets at the race. We're in the middle of a SmackDown tag team title match, and the topic of discussion is on the Talladega Nights movie. Which, don't get me wrong, is an awesome film. Go see it if you haven't. But Jay Uso and The Miz are competing at the moment. No time to discuss movies. Tag team since day one. Correction, Corey, the Usos have been teaming since day one-ish. Get your facts right. Uh, the official didn't see it, he was trying to back up Jimmy Uso. Jimmy Uso? Oh my god, that mess up was so embarrassing. Tom Phillips seriously confused The Miz with Jimmy Uso. That's worth a double sin. Fighting for his father, fighting for his family. Any chance WWE has to reference Paige's new movie, they'll definitely put it in. Trinity. The fans are chanting the wrong word. These are not the yes kicks anymore. They're the it kicks. Not too difficult to understand. That goes Jimmy Uso. Actually, that was Jay Uso who got knocked off the apron as Jimmy was the one who recently tagged in. So trying to counter, hitting predicament, kick out. That looked more like Jimmy simply released Miz, who didn't even look like he was trying to kick out. Jay Uso grabbing the Miz's ass. Going up again! Oh! Even if neither one of the Usos connected with a super kick, Miz would have never even landed near them as he only jumped not even a foot away. In the top row, oh! Wrestler accidentally gets knocked into his own partner cliche. Oh my god! Oh my god is right. One of the coolest ways Shane McMahon has ever executed the coast to coast. I call major bullshit because the Miz's right shoulder was off the map for literally the entire pinfall. Fast lane screw job, the way I see this result. The fact that Miz and Shane lost, followed by approaching Miz's father and telling each other that everything is going to be alright, really gives away that one of these guys are going to turn heel. I'd say it's cool that Shane turned heel aside from two things. It was plainly obvious that a heel turn was coming and Shane is a McMahon, the most untrustworthy name in WWE. After the many times we've seen the parents of wrestlers get assaulted, why do they even bother to appear at ringside if they're prone for target men? Sorry, but it was only cool when The Shield did this with crappy quality phone footage. By the new dominant force! That'll only last a short period of time. Match graphics is the hype of the main event, which isn't gonna happen for another two and a half hours. Also, this last time ever crap didn't work for Triple H and The Undertaker at that, that, that one show in Australia. I think that's where it was. Because they ended up fighting again at the crowd. <laughs> Anyway, my point is that I don't believe this is the last time ever for The Shield at all. Oh yeah, Elias performs literally three times tonight, and all three times lead to absolutely nothing for him. Just so I don't have to go through this individually, I'm just gonna give this three additional sins and move on. Previously on Fastlane. The graphics for Mandy Rose's name are literally the same ones for the Emelina promos from 2017, if anybody even remembers who that was. Byron, you're not allowed within 50 yards of Mandy Rose. Corey Graves believes that Mandy Rose has a restraining order against Byron Saxon for whatever reason, a mystery that sounds far more entertaining than what we are watching right now. Who do you think you are, huh? Monologuing is a villain's greatest weakness, Mandy. Iron female competitor. If Corey spent less time talking about how hot Mandy is and more time on the fact that she just executed a picture perfect suplex, this match would be a lot more fun to watch. Change the name of the event to Wrestle Mandy. Wrestle Mandy. Check it out for rats or ninjas. Alright, I was getting annoyed by a lot of Corey's comments, but that comment about Sonya Deville checking for possible rats or ninjas was funny as hell. That type of comedy deserves to send off. Power Phillips. Oscar Check that show. out. Ugh, that was bad on so many levels. Rose, oh, and the Oscars retain. Well, that just happened, I guess. That wasn't even a believable trip on the ring apron. Two matches in, we're not looking good. Then again, it's a fast lane event. When have they ever been good? I'd be interested in this dissension between Mandy and Sonya if it didn't already happen in the past. 
Hey, let's go. We gotta go. Thanks to Biggie and Xavier Woods barging into Mr. McMahon's office, the rest of all the disgusting and disgraceful bullshit can happen to Kofi Kingston. Thanks a lot, New Day. And make this match for a WWE Championship a triple threat. Big E should have honestly worded it better and said, add Kofi Kingston to the WWE Championship match tonight. Because by simply saying, make it a triple threat, that allows Vince to screw with our minds once again. Triple threat match! Even despite the fact that I don't like what's about to happen, I'm at least glad that WWE didn't put the WWE title match literally 47 minutes into this near four hour show, because that is absolutely stupid. A handicap match! And here's 50 Sins because I am absolutely disgusted with this. We're just ripping off any other storyline involving Ultimate Underdogs here. And unlike those other storylines, we're not given any logical reasons as to why Kofi Kingston is getting all these punishments. I'm more annoyed than anything else. Mr. McMahon has a rhyme and a reason. Elaborate, please. Oh, what the hell was even going on anymore? I don't get any of this. That's it. Here's an additional 5 sins for the 5 minutes of this match's existence. I don't have to be interested in this, even if it will most likely propel Kofi to the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania. This story is disgusting. I don't give a crap what anybody says. What does Bailey even have painted on her head? Never got the chance to see what it is or understand why it's there. We want to be the greatest tag team champions. Well, considering you're literally the only women's tag team champions at this point in time, you're already the greatest tag team champions of all time. By default. And you can bank on that. These puns are really making me facepalm so hard. I'm honestly not following the plot of why Ricochet and Aleister Black have been moved up to the main roster, but are still prominent to NXT. Sure, they're teaming in the Dusty Rhodes Classic, but why are they on the main roster? If the answer is because reasons, then it's a sin. Remember when everybody used to sing along to this song all the time? What the hell happened? It took literally a full month before the Revival actually got a televised full entrance as the Raw Tag Team Champion since winning the titles. Let that sink in. Also, that one moment when you realize that the entrances for this match took about 7 minutes of pay-per-view time for a match that's only 3 minutes longer than that. Let's see. The heel team is the Revival, the two sets of challengers are faces, and the challengers ganged up on the champions upon the match beginning. That's when you know the heel champions are obviously retaining their titles. Shoulder up. Bobby Roode looked about ready to jump in there. Renee Young doesn't realize that the person she was referred to was Aleister Black, who looks absolutely nothing like Bobby Roode. Standard strategy. 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 Got your nose. Dang, the way Chad Gable sold that kick from Alistair was awesome. Made it seem like Alistair's kicks are devastating while not overselling it at the same time. One sin off. Legs taken off. Bobby Roode reacted a little too early from Alistair's attack. Dash one, two plays wild, and here's Ricochet! A couple more sins off because that series of moves from each team were done at the right time. About time we see some great action in the Raw tag team title scene. Coming down heavy! Oh! Damn it, that could have been the highlight of the match, until Ricochet's leg slipped off of Scott Dawson and Bobby Roode fell down despite not getting hit at all. No disqualifications, no count out. If this match has no disqualifications or countouts, then why isn't every wrestler allowed in the ring at the same time? You gotta admit, I do bring up a good point here, because even if the non-legal wrestlers were in the ring, what's the worst that could happen? They can't get disqualified, so what's the second worst thing that could happen? Ricochet! To see Ricochet leap over the ropes in the corner was cool, not to mention the perfect timing of Chad Gable tagging himself in. Post-match assault. A fatal four-way match! Yes, it was announced on the pre-show that Samoa Joe will be taking on R-Truth, Andrade, and Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship tonight, but that's still impromptu as it was announced during the Fastlane event. Take a look at R-Truth saying, that's my title. Knowing our truth he probably believes he actually is still the United States Champion, not realizing that he lost it to Samoa Joe last week. Here we go, Fatal 4-Way Match! Giving this an immediate sin off because we actually started this Fatal 4-Way Match at a fast and furious pace, instead of the cliched staring contest. Bravo! This is for the United States oh, Championship! Oh. Well, thanks for stating the obvious, Corey. Usually you come up with cool things or even hilarious things to say. Why not do that instead of stating the obvious? Hey, from Watch the right. top! Whoa. Whoa. Double Hurricane Rana, double the perfect time in, double the center movers. Just brute force and oh! And this match is awesome, don't you agree? No doubt this was the best fast lane event, which isn't saying much considering the previous four sucked big time. Uh, see, this is my issue. According to the fans and according to the commentators, you're not allowed to pay tribute to the late great Eddie Guerrero if your name is not Rey Mysterio. And to those people, I say, fuck you. How come it's okay for Rey to pay tribute to Eddie, but completely wrong for anyone else to do it, assholes? Situation. In just 10 minutes, this match has what most 30-minute matches don't have. Non-stop entertainment. 
This is a shot. Why the booing? Andrade isn't mocking Ray, nor is he mocking Eddie Guerrero. I swear it's 100% fucking stupid that people find it disrespectful when Andrade pays tribute to Eddie all just because he wasn't as close to him as Ray was. Really pissing me off. Our truth and Andrade trying to break up the fight between Carmella and Selena Vega. Those girls can handle themselves. Focus on the damn title. No wonder you two lose. <sighs> this is boring. That may just be the world's fastest coquina clutch I've ever seen. Ray was out within seconds. If wrestlers did that more often, the submission would look more like a threat. But sadly, they don't do that. Because reasons, and because we want Beth Phoenix to team up with Natalia for whatever reason, despite her retirement. Then again, this is the company where retirements don't exist, so whatever. It's boss time! Oh, shut your face with that annoying catchphrase. Staying champion is another. It's only hard for Sasha Banks, considering she has never successfully retained a championship in WWE. And according to the results of this match, she still has yet to get the job done. True, Sasha and Bailey retain tonight. However, it's Bailey who gets the job done. I'm just saying, Sasha still has never retained a title herself. Since they've been a tag team over the years. Michael Cole brings up Sasha Banks and Bayley being a tag team over the years as if they weren't a team 15% of the last few years, which they were. But the winning team will probably defend at WrestleMania. Well, unless they defend and lose the titles in the coming weeks leading up to WrestleMania. Just saying, that's happened before with other champions. Tamina and Sasha start. What you just heard was me face palming. For the first time, you actually heard me do that. I swear, one of these days, I'm going to accidentally give myself a concussion just because of face bombing. Down is Nia, you Sasha. Are you serious right now? That is way worse than a wrestler watching the whole time and not countering. Very smart to look for opportunities. Tamina clearly jumped and hit the corner on her own accord, and Bailey did absolutely nothing effective in the situation. Force. Uh oh, team! Haha, <laughs> you failed. He's going to go no! Bailey's a dick to her own partner. That's not how ba Nia Jax fell back a little too early from that. Second botch in the past 50 seconds. Can this match be over already? Women's tag uh, of course. Oh my god, goodness. This moment between Tamina, Nia Jax, and Beth Phoenix was getting intense. And then Michael Cole just had to ruin it by saying, oh my god, goodness. There's absolutely no reason for this! Well, no offense, but Beth Phoenix is the one who struck Tamina first. So it's her own damn fault that she's getting her ass kicked. I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, this match is supposed to be a triple threat, you know, and even if they wanted to keep Mustafa Ali's participation a secret, they could have still put the shadowy figure with a question mark on the graphics. But all of a sudden... The commentators are saying this triple threat match is all of a sudden, despite the fact that Mr. McMahon clearly said an hour ago that this title match was going to be a triple threat. So, Mustafa Ali believes he's Tony Stark with that hand? <laughs> the whining, crying, and complaining members of the WWE Universe attempted to hijack this WWE title match all because they were led to believe that Kofi Kingston was in this match when Vince never said that was going to happen. I'll admit that I was in the crowd and I fell for it too, but I didn't try to stupidly hijack the show because of non-existent promises. You are nothing but ah. Unfazed by those chops from Brian. Byron, it's the other way around. Kevin Owens is the one who's given the chops to Daniel Bryan, who is actually phased by them. Hey, it's a bunch of lip service. Show off. What a bunch of crybabies. Kofi Kingston is not in this match. Just deal with the fact that life's not fair and never will be fair and move on. Who's the man now? Becky Lynch can answer that question since she calls herself the man. On the last, Kevin Owens fighting through the... The crowd is the biggest sin of this match. Just because Kofi isn't in the match doesn't automatically make it boring. This match was no doubt one of the best of the night, actually. The only thing I found boring was being part of this crowd. Welcome to Cleveland, y'all. Daniel Bryan may not want to look at his reflection since his chest looks like raw hamburger meat the way he's been behaving lately. Oh, Picture perfect. Well done. Here are two sins removed. Remember the good old days when the pop-up powerbomb actually helped Kevin Owens win matches? Nowadays, it's easily kicked out of like it's not even a finisher anymore. Stop Fowler's moment! Good lord, that was brutal. Not gonna lie, I cringed in pain after seeing that. The wrath of Rowan! Really? I saw this live and noticed that Rowan never once took his eyes on Mustafa Ali, even before he leaped onto the apron, and yet he still got hit with a super kick. He must not be paying attention to what he's doing. Oh, Ow, my hands! I haven't said that in a while. Jeez, what's your problem? American announce table making fun of you or something? Back in a cat and mouse. Oh, Another perfectly timed maneuver. Damn, this match just keeps getting better and better, am I right? Oh. Holy shit, that was epic. This time it's five sins removed. What an amazing WWE Championship match, and what an amazing way to end it, too. 
Okay, this is just getting old and boring. So, did Becky Lynch win the Royal Rumble match or not? She honestly had a legal right to compete at WrestleMania for the title by winning the Rumble. In my opinion, Becky should have pulled a move Randy Orton made 10 years ago when he threatened to sue WWE if he got removed from the title picture. And damn, that was 10 years ago? Fastlane is brought to you by... Skip! Unless Becky Lynch ripped apart a muscle in her leg, I'm pretty sure he'd be healed by now. It's been nearly two months since she supposedly injured it. Why does she still need the crutch again? Injury mocking. No matter how much of a beating Charlotte Flair would take, she will still never shut up. Physically beating someone up doesn't mean they'll stop talking. 75% of this match is Charlotte taunted Becky's injury, which drags on for far too long. I was hoping this match would at least be good, but it was a major letdown. And now Charlotte with the right hands. That's Becky Lynch who's delivering the right hands, you moron. Charlotte is the blonde one who isn't injured. Good lord. These two women used to be the best of friends. Who cares? Champion. As funny as it was to see Ronda Rousey hand over the victory to Becky Lynch by disqualification, I honestly think it would have been better if Becky actually pulled it off and defeated Charlotte herself. And I would praise Becky being reinstated to the title match at WrestleMania, but she should have never been taken out in the first place, so... This whole charade of Lacey Evans coming out only to just leave. If I wanted to see something like that, I'd just watch Grandpa Simpson walking in and out during that one episode of The Simpsons. Alright, that surprised me very much. Perfect example of RKO out of nowhere. That was awesome. The reunion that we never thought we'd see. You mean the reunion we never thought we'd see three times within the period of a year and a half. It's a strategic alliance. This argument about the existence of Baron Corbin's team between Corey Graves and Renee Young is really giving me a headache. I neither know nor care why they're a unit. The only thing that matters is they are. 35 seconds of waiting for the Shield's music to hit. Also, if Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley know the Shield as well as they say they do, then why are they looking at the entrance ramp knowing full well the Shield isn't entering the arena that way? Is a thing of beauty Haha, <laughs> Renee got cut off. She was more than likely about to start bragging about how good looking her husband was. And here we go! Pre-match assault. Also, for this last time ever crap, how about we make this a tornado tag team match so that more hell can be raised in the Shield's final act? Functioning on all cylinders, they're unstoppable. Despite the Shield losing several times, even when all three of them were functioning together. Unstoppable my ass. Away from these men Baron Corbin is addicted to Drew McIntyre. Bobby Lashley was about to tag in Drew, and Baron decides to tag himself in before that could happen. Asshole. Time to take our yard. Even though Roman Reigns has said that this was his yard ever since defeating The Undertaker at WrestleMania two years ago. Bobby Lashley says there are no egos on his side. <laughs> that's the funniest joke Bobby has ever said if that's the case. Going. He's pledging his allegiance to a hot dog stand while dancing to Lady Gaga music. What the freaking hell do you think he's doing? First cover by Dean Ambrose got his shoulder up way before the referee could get the two count, and yet it was ignored until he brought his arm up further. Is the referee blind or something? Not quick enough. Ambrose. Ah, this brings back sin memories. How every wrestler falls for Dean's rope flip trick, as I call it. I know it's probably called something else, but I call it rope flip trick. Got it? Oh, and Rollins! The referee is just standing around allowing this to happen. Normally by this point, he would have thrown the match out due to too many illegal wrestlers in the ring. Again, why not just have this be a tornado tag match when that's basically what it's been looking like this whole time? Well, the good news is that Drew can sit in a comfortable chair while Dean beats him down. Since there's so much action going on both inside the ring and outside the ring, they should just keep this camera view going until everyone is back in the ring. That way, we can keep up with all the action at one time. It's that easy. We interrupt Fastlane 2019 to bring you Extreme Rules 2014. Also, Seth Rollins is a dick to his own partner as Dean got the worst of that hit. Uh -oh. Side. Now it's Reigns who's outnumbered. Bobby was watching Roman the entire time and could have easily leaked out the ring apron before the Superman punch could connect. Attempted copyright infringement, which will obviously lead to the team's downfall and the Shield's victory. Happens every single time. These guys have all been outside the ring for lord knows how long and somehow haven't got counted out yet. I don't think the referee even started this count like he's supposed to. I may not like the shield, but I'll give them one final salute, assuming this really is the end, which I hope it is. Ten sins off to culminate this video. This might just be the only good Fastlane event. Glad I was in attendance for this night.